Why does my kid want to quit karate? There comes a time in every martial artist's training when they think they don't want to go anymore. The truth is we just didn't want to go on that day. I've been there, all of us have been there. Thanks to the fact that either someone helped us get to class that day, or we found the inner strength to make ourselves go on that day, we learned perseverance and self-discipline. I personally don't think you can truly be a black belt unless you've been through this and found a way to move past it. But this doesn't necessarily explain why kids want to quit when they love it so much in the beginning. But I have an answer. Let's imagine I take you two times per week to go ride a roller coaster. I'm assuming, of course, that you love roller coasters. After a couple of months of doing this, I'm not really going to want to take you anymore. It's a pain, and I'll probably complain about the time to drive you and the cost. You're probably going to be sick of going too. The excitement goes out of it, and now it just becomes a drudgery. Unlike martial arts training, riding a roller coaster has no real character developing benefits. It's just an amusement. Martial arts is similar in that in the beginning everyone is excited to go, but after a bit there are four things that can make us not want to go anymore. But since martial arts training is a character developing activity, it doesn't make any sense to quit. Instead, it's important to find a way through that plateau and move forward. So. What are those four reasons? All right, number one, the training seems to be too challenging. Obviously, it has its moments when it can be difficult. If earning a black belt was easy, it wouldn't be worth anything, would it? However, if a student runs up on a challenge, that's when you talk to the instructor. You get a quick booster lesson and show them that they can overcome that challenge. If the student never learns how to face and overcome challenges, how is this going to affect them later in their life? Letting them be quit because of this would obviously be a mistake. Okay, number two. The training seems to become tedious or the word we hate the most, it might seem boring. Learning in school is easy. You read it, you hear it, you see it, and then you know it. That's cognitive education. Teaching the body requires something different duplicating the movements of others to the point that it occurs without thought. This takes repetition and time, like learning to sew or hammer nails, swim, skate, run, drive a car, ride a bike, type on a keyboard, write, or any other physical skill. The skill is learned through repetitions. This is called kinesthetic education. You didn't learn to walk by watching someone and then hopping up and doing it. Defending your life is a, in a dangerous encounter requires working a technique to perfection. Your life is on the line. Everything in life is going to have its moments where it is tedious, whether it's relationships, academics, or at our jobs or careers. If the student never learns how to work through those plateaus, how is this going to affect them later in life? Letting them quit over this would, would obviously be a mistake. Okay, number three. Something happens within the training hall that makes them not want to go anymore. Perhaps there's another student there that they don't like, or maybe one of the instructors isn't their favorite. It might also be that the training hall isn't comfortable, safe, or clean, or maybe the schedule isn't flexible to meet the student's needs. In our case, we take great care to overcome any of those issues, but if we don't know about it, then we can't fix it. Letting them quit over this would obviously be a mistake, and instead, it should be worked out. To not do so is missing an opportunity to teach them how to problem solve. Okay, last one, number four, something outside the training hall affects the student and makes them not want to go. Now, perhaps a peer makes fun of them and makes them feel bad, that was my situation. Maybe the parents aren't supportive or complain openly about the drudgery of going or complain openly about the cost. There's no one a child wants to please more than their parents. Hearing parents complain about something they love will quickly sabotage their love of that activity. If you don't keep your word and bring them and encourage them to keep their word and train hard, how is this going to affect them later in life? Letting them quit over this would obviously be a mistake. When they are here, they are glad they came. Look, the frontal lobe of the brain is not fully developed until we're 25 years old. This is the part of the brain that's used for rational thought. They can't rationalize that once they're here, they're going to be glad they came. They can't rationalize that they're going to be so happy to someday earn their black belt. 
they just want to watch their tablet or play their video game right now. That's how children are. They would eat candy and never do chores or homework. They would never take care of their personal hygiene. They would never go to school. And they would sit around and play video games all day. That's why the parent must make the decisions. Decisions that are life altering. My wife and I decided there were three things we wanted our children to be able to do and we would make them do them if we had to. Number one, learn to swim. We live in Florida and water's everywhere. They've got to learn to swim. Number two, learn to defend their life because Florida. And number three, learn to drive defensively. Also because Florida. You brought your child to us because you identified a problem. You told us you wanted us to help you with that problem. And in some cases, we're the only avenue you can use to solve those problems. We've seen students over the course of decades improve their focus, get into the best shape of their lives, improve their concentration, raise their confidence, develop their self-discipline, improve impulse control, get control of their ADHD, ADD, ODD, help them with autism, give them the skills that have saved their lives or the lives of a loved one later on in their life. We've increased their awareness of themselves and use this as a path of self-discovery. Ask any of our black belts, what was the surprising benefit that they got from their training? They will all name something and tell you that gaining that was beyond price. Your child's future self is reliant on you to make sure they attend and keep attending. Their future self will be so happy that you help them achieve their black belt. How do I know? I'm old and I've been teaching for 40 years and I've seen it thousands of times. I've also seen people let their kid quit and then regret it for the rest of their lives. And I'm not kidding. I meet people all the time who tell me they loved training as a kid. And when I ask why they stopped, their words are nearly 100% of the time, my parents let me quit. Sure, it takes time to bring them. Yes, it has a cost associated with it. No, absolutely no one regrets earning a black belt. Be strong. We're developing people who can fight all of life's battles. True warriors. And it takes time and commitment. Be strong for them, for they're just children at the moment. But someday, they will be battle-hardened and life-ready. How many times has your child begged you for a toy or video game, and then once you got it for them pretty quickly, they were done with it? When they first started martial arts, it was all about the fun for them. But you brought them to us with a goal, and that goal hasn't changed. And even though they may not always be excited about coming, they love it once they're here. Make the decision for them. Help them stick with it. No one will regret it in the end. Wrenchy out.